academic degree, initial leadership experience, now you want to drive forward your career in Germany? The Alexander von Humboldt Foundation is searching for the leaders of tomorrow from Brazil, the USA, Russia, China, India and South Africa. The German Chancellor Fellowship offers you an opportunity to take the next career step in Germany, irrespective of your field of work. In order to apply, develop your own project idea and find the host of your choice to mentor you. Once your host has confirmed, you can apply for a fellowship. Beatrice, for example, is a journalist who is looking to raise awareness for the global topic of migration in her home country of Brazil. She found her German host in an NGO and plans to write a blog on her project as well as to produce stories for the Brazilian media. Or Zai, he's an economic expert who worked on a project to promote German-Chinese business relations in environmental technology. Today, he's a project manager with a strategy consultancy firm, controlling activities in the renewable energy sector in emerging markets like China. Fellows get by perfectly well in English, but thanks to a free intensive German course and daily practice, their German improves constantly. Financially, they don't need to worry, because the fellowship pays quite enough to live well in Germany. And that's not all. Fellows attend conferences together and go on a study tour, Meet the Federal Chancellor, the patron of the program, and make valuable contacts both in Germany and amongst the other international fellows. Would you also like to come to Germany on a German Chancellor Fellowship? Then just find out more. Bem-vindos a uma live informativa sobre a Bolsa Chanceler. É um prazer receber vocês aqui nesse ambiente digital. Meu nome é Stephanie, eu sou a responsável pela comunicação da Câmara Brasil-Alemanha de São Paulo e, como sempre, a gente apoia a divulgação é, dessa bolsa, que é uma bolsa também apoiada pela, é, feita pela Fundação Alexander von Humboldt. Eu queria dar, primeiro, alguns avisos aqui em português para todos vocês, a respeito do que a gente vai discutir hoje e também alguns recados importantes. Como vocês viram na divulgação da live, ela vai acontecer em inglês. É, isso acontece não só porque a gente tem pessoas de fora que vão participar da live, é, da Fundação Alexander von Humboldt, mas também porque o inglês é um pré-requisito para que você participe da Bolsa. Ou seja, eles não exigem que você fale alemão, mas você precisa ter o inglês para poder se candidatar e para poder usufruir é, da melhor forma todas essas oportunidades que a Bolsa oferece. Além disso, uma questão de cronograma também, para que vocês consigam entender um pouco melhor. Agora, no segundo semestre, a gente tem toda a parte de seleção dos projetos, das pessoas que vão é, ter essa Bolsa, né, direito a usufruir essa Bolsa, e a viagem acontece só no ano que vem. Então, isso também é uma coisa importante para a gente mencionar aqui. Então, só para vocês entenderem como que a gente vai, organizou a programação aqui da live, a gente tem a participação do Consulado Geral da Alemanha em São Paulo, a gente tem, claro, a participação é, das pessoas aqui da Alexander von Humboldt, a gente tem também dois alunos que vão conversar com vocês e tirar as principais dúvidas, porque a gente sabe que muitas delas podem surgir ao longo do caminho, e a gente está aqui justamente para ajudar e para conseguir fazer com que você possa fazer a aplicação para a Bolsa da melhor forma possível e aproveite essa oportunidade. Então, com esses recados dados, eu passo agora para o inglês e gostaria de dar também as boas-vindas ao Dr. Christian Rochmann e também ao Julius Calaminos. Thank you very much uh, for being here today and for, um, well, participating and giving tips and tricks and also uh, on behalf of the consulate Julius showing how important this um, fellowship is. So with that being said, I would like to invite you, um, you have the floor to talk a little bit about the consulate and why um, this fellowship is so important and why do you think it is nice for Brazilians to take this opportunity? Thank you, uh, Stefanie. Muito obrigado. Uh, good morning to everyone. My name is Julius and as 
Council for Culture and Science uh, at the General Consulate of Germany in Sao Paulo. I am delighted to take part in this year's kickoff event for the German Chancellor Fellowship. Thanks to everyone organizing this event, the German-Brazilian uh, Chamber of Commerce, uh, Stefanie, uh, and the Alexander von Humboldt Foundation. I think this is a great opportunity to share some thoughts on this extraordinary program which really combines uh, the best of our both both of our countries, I think. And in previous years, it was our privilege uh, to host a big kickoff event in our residence in Jajitz in Sao Paulo. Last year, we had a slight hope that in this year it could be possible again to host this event in real life, um, but real reality told us otherwise, unfortunately. However, the important thing is that we keep going, that we adapt to this difficult situation for all of us as best as we can and that we maintain our optimism. So I think uh, we are also seeing that there will be better days ahead and hoping that there will be better days ahead. And this is also why this, this event today is important because it uh, looks to a, it, it is a, it's a slight hint to a better future uh, that we can uh, do this program again. There are many great reasons to apply for the fellowship, as you will learn today from uh, the guest speakers and uh, the alumna. Uh, from our point of view as the German consulate, one main reason is that you will be part of an excellent network. Uh, you will learn, you will get to know people from all over the world, uh, from Germany especially, but also from other countries. Um, and I think uh, these connections you will make in this fellowship uh, will benefit uh, your professional life um, uh, a lot. And uh, you will benefit from this all of your professional life and also your private life, I think. And also, we as Germany, the German government, want to benefit from you. We want to learn from you and we want to exchange experiences throughout borders. So in that spirit, I would like to encourage you all to check out this great opportunity uh, of the German Chancellor Fellowship, to come up with new ideas and projects and to apply for the fellowship. It's people like you that demonstrate that Brazil is full of young talent. We know this as the general consulate, the embassy as well, uh, also all the consulates in, in Brazil know this, uh, and that uh, Brazil is full of young talent, creative professionals and uh, great, great young leaders. And we would very much like to draw on that huge potential as much as we can. We firmly believe that fostering contacts and cooperation between open-minded people of different countries, exchanging views and knowledge experience is the best way to create added value for all of us. Or in other words, to make um, our countries and perhaps even the world a better place. On this happy note, uh, and on behalf of our uh, Consulate General and of the German government, I would like to thank you again for this um, event and uh, to all the participants uh, for your interest in the German Chancellor Fellowship. And I wish you the best of luck uh, for your applications. Thank you. Thank you, Julius. Um, Dr. Roschmann, uh, we would also like to hear from you as a member of the selection committee. I think this would be very interesting um, and also a heads up for everybody that's watching us. This is the man you have to please uh, alongside his colleagues in the selection committee. So if you have any questions, I already saw this uh, on the chat, you can send them up to the chat and we will um, talk about it later on a Q&A session also asking Dr. Roschmann for tips and tricks. So please, Dr. Roschmann, the floor is yours. Thank you, Stephanie, and thank you, Julius, as well. Um, uh, it's kind of funny because sort of my four colleagues and I, we are in between uh, Julius's promotion of the event <laughs> and, and, and the award uh, of a scholarship. Um, to be honest, it's... Uh, and really great applications, uh, great talent people and great applications. So it's a very, very tough job every year to select, uh, but only 10 people out of this whole universe we have had in the uh, get the right ones. And 
just for you to know, we are a total of five uh, uh, members of our selection committee. Mm -hmm. We have two uh, uh, lady professors based in Germany, in Cologne. Uh, we have one professor, Julia, based uh, in, uh, uh, he's professor at the EGV in Sao Paulo. It's Thomas, who is the uh, uh, executive officer of the German Chamber, and myself, I'm a lawyer. Um, so we, we are from a broad variety of backgrounds. However, as you know, the project is or the projects are open for all kind of things, um, meaning that I, for example, as a lawyer, couldn't possibly technically evaluate environmental issues or NGOs. It is what we are looking for is an interesting project which somehow ties Germany to Brazil back and forth. But most importantly, we are looking for someone or for individuals who have the potential to be future bridge builders in between Germany and Brazil going forward. And that the project you are proposing to accomplish uh, during your stay helps you with progressing your career, helps you with developing ideas and helps you being or becoming a bridge builder in Brazil, uh, in between Brazil and Germany. I think that's the task of at hand for the committee, which is, as I said, it's a difficult task. It's very challenging, but it's also very joyful to have this conversation with you guys further down the road because this has been a really very, very en en enriching uh, uh, meeting so many talented people. Thank you, Stephanie, that's from my end. Thank you, Dr. Roschmann. So as I said, um, you're gonna join us afterwards for the Q&A as well. And um, now we're just going to move on. And um, I would like to ask Dr. Sarah Tenbrinke from the Alexander von Humboldt Foundation to join us right now. Um, she's talking to us directly from Germany. So Dr. Sarah Tenbrinke, welcome. And thank you so much uh, for being here. And she has a special presentation for you um, to take a look and explain a little bit more about the, the German Chancellor Fellowship. And maybe some of the questions that I'm already seeing in the chat are going to be answered by this presentation. But don't worry, please send your questions along because we're gonna tackle most of them or all the ones that we can uh, during this time in the Q&A. So, Dr. Tembrenke, thank you once again for being here. It is very nice to, to promote this um, fellowship once again here in Brazil. Thank you, Stephanie. Uh, is my presentation also up already? Or is that working? Yes. Yes, that looks good. Thank you. Yeah, bon dia a todos. Uh, my name is Sarah Tembrenke. I am from the, I work at the selection department of the Alexander von Humboldt Foundation. And uh, I'm very happy to be here today with you to tell you a bit uh, about the background of the program and of, about the program itself. Uh, but before I start with that, I would like to give a very big thank you to the German Brazilian Chamber of Commerce for organizing this event. Uh, maybe some of you are streaming this for the first time, but the chamber is always very helpful to us in organizing this event and it's very nice for us to know that we have friends in Sao Paulo who help us to spread the word about this program that we are also very proud of and very happy about. So uh, we are very happy that this can happen even in times of pandemic and even when it's online we are still keeping it going because we are looking for the best young people of Brazil and the chamber does a very good job in helping us find them. So thank you very much for that. I would like to start uh, just very shortly to tell you something about this foundation, the Alexander von Humboldt Foundation that hosts this program. So um, I don't know if you know the name of Alexander von Humboldt, but he was a, a German scholar who lived in the 18th and 19th centuries, who um, was very fond of Latin America, actually. He did a big, a big uh, journey there uh, where he developed a lot of his theories. So he's also, as far as I know, quite well known in those parts of the world. And because he was such a committed scientist and also because he was very committed to helping young scientists uh, to further their research, uh, we are named after him. And as a foundation, as we exist today, we exist since 1953. 
and we are asked by different German uh, ministries to to look for the best brightest minds in the world and to give them the possibility to spend some time in Germany and then go back to their own countries to uh, continue um, working there. And a very important part of what we do is uh, our network. So we invest a lot of um, a lot of our uh, working on creating this network. We have about 30,000 Humboldtians, as we call them, our alumni from all over the world, 140 countries. And we are, of course, also very proud to say that 55 of them have by now earned uh, won a Nobel Prize. So that is a very big international network that you become part of when you uh, get funding from our foundation. And most people we fund are academics and scientists, but we also have this one very special program which is for future leaders. And that's what I'm here to tell you about today, which is the German Chancellor Fellowship. Now, this is a bit a wordy name. And if you hear me say Buka, which will probably happen, that's just the German short for Bundeskanzlerstipendium Programm, which is also very wordy. So uh, I might use that to cut my time. So then you know what I'm referring to. Maybe I start with a little bit of the history. Uh, so this program started in 1990 and started as a bilateral program between uh, uh, Germany and the US. It was started on the initiative of their the then Chancellor Helmut Kohl as a way to show to the US that the Germany is now reunified, but we still find the US a very important uh, ally and we want to give something back. So he started this program. And then actually through throughout the years, it was expanded by different chancellors. Um, in 2002, it was expanded by Chancellor Gerhard Schröder to Russia, to the Russian Federation. And uh, Merkel has been a chancellor for quite a while now, and she has uh, helped us expand to different countries. So in 2006, we expanded to China and then a very important year for you, of course, is 2013. Since then, we have Buka alumni and fellow from Brazil and India. And now we actually have a very exciting year because last year uh, Angela Merkel told us that she wanted to uh, continue the program also in South Africa. So we are very busy at the moment to set up our structures in South Africa. And if you are selected as a Buka Fellow next year, you will actually also be meeting our first South African Fellows. So we are very happy about that. And uh, it was already shown to you in the video. It was already referred to that this network is very important to us. So you can see that we have a network of around 700 uh, German Chancellor Fellowship alumni in the whole world. You can see that 55 of them are in Brazil. So there are also quite a lot of people in Brazil who have already done the fellowship and who you can also reach to if you have questions and try to connect with them. And I'm very happy that we have two of them also here who can already start answering your questions, but feel free also to, to look for them and to reach out for them because they are the real expert actually on the program because they have done it themselves. So. What are we looking for? We, uh, Dr. Roschman already uh, touched a bit on this. We are looking for young people who have already started in their professional careers. So young professionals and people also who just finished university and who are prom uh, promising university graduates. And what is important to us, because this has this, this program has this bilateral uh, bridge building um, aspect we are in we want people who are interested internationally and who have this international outlook and want also to act in an international way it's also important that you have started showing that you have leadership potential this of course depends how old you are and how long you have been working but it needs to be visible that you have potential and you have to convince us that you will be future decision makers and thought leaders in your fields and these fields, also like Dr. Roschman said, can be anything. So we don't limit any, any part, any discipline. Whatever you studied, you can apply. And whether you work in politics or public administration, whether you work in business or in media or in civil society or culture, 
as long as you have an interesting project and we believe in you as a future leader, you have a big chance uh, of getting a fellowship. So that is actually very nice because the people you will meet as fellow fellows will also come from very different fields, which I think is a very uh, interesting element. And I also wanted to talk to you a little bit about what we offer you if you get selected as a fellow. So because we are looking for the most promising young leaders from Brazil, of course, we also want to give something in return. And that means that our allowances are actually for, for German standards quite high. So you see here that uh, it can go up to 2,750 euros per month. That is the highest category. So that also depends on your working experience and where you are currently um, in the job you are doing. Uh, but all all the the steps that you can you can have they allow for a comfortable living in Germany because we also don't want you to have to worry about anything else. And because we know that some of you might already have families and want to not be a year away from your family, it's also possible to bring your family and we also finance that. We help you with uh, costs of family stays also in Germany. So that should not. Um, that should not be an argument for not applying that you have a family. And if you have a project where you think it's very interesting to do it in Germany, but actually it would be also very valuable to stay in another European country for one or two months, that's also possible. So you can also look on our websites for the specifics, but we just wanted to let you know that there's quite a lot of possibilities. And next to these financial aspects, we also offer you um, other things during your fellowship. The first and the most important thing, I think, is that because we want you to become a future bridge builder between Germany and Brazil, we would really like you to learn German. And that means that we also finance an intensive German course for up to three months um, before you start your fellowship. And it's also possible to have German classes um, when you already started your fellowship, like evening classes to continue practicing. Of course, if you already speak German because you have German heritage or because you have been in Germany already, you don't have to do the course. It's, it's for the people who want to learn Germany, German. And we also offer different network meetings because uh, for us it's very important that you also meet the other young leaders from the US and from Russia and from China and from uh, India and South Africa. So we have network meetings for that. There's also always a very big annual meeting where you will meet not only fellow Bukas but everybody who has been funded by us in this moment. So that's also very interesting to still meet uh, completely different people and there is also a final meeting for all the all the Buka fellows to close off the year and I brought you some impressions uh, from those meetings this as you can see was pre-corona times we would never dare to stand as close to each other at the moment but this is uh, at an annual meeting like the one I was just telling you about the, uh, as you see in the middle, we have our federal president and uh, in blue and in gray is the president of our foundation. And around them, you see quite many uh, present Buka fellows in that year who just all met in that garden and had the possibility to make photos with the German federal president. So that's always a very festive occasion. We just had it last week all completely online. It was also very nice. But I hope and I am positive that once you would be in Germany, that would could look like this again. There is also always a reception at the end, at the closing meeting with the Chancellor Angela Merkel, who by then will be another chancellor. But uh, I think that's also always very nice. It's also a moment to get together and to, uh, to meet a person that you would otherwise not, not get to meet. And this is how a final meeting looks in times of pandemic. So this was the final meeting of the people who were here in 2020. They knew each other mostly from the screen, which is of course not the real thing, but they were still keeping up the spirit and uh, still meeting each other. And I hope, and I'm positive that by the time you would be a Buka fellow, you could meet in person again. Let's hope so. 
So just a, a few technical, more technical elements towards the end. What do you need to apply? You can, of course, also always look at our website. It also says all of that. But what is important is that this is really a bilateral program between German, Germany and the target country. So you need Brazilian citizenship or citizenship of one of these other five countries. You need to have initial proven leadership experience. Uh, you need a project plan that is also quite an important part and I'm sure that we will talk also with with our two uh, fellows about this uh, a project that that's interesting that you can do uh, for one year that is related to what you know about but that still helps you also to build your career further um, and that's agreed to by a host and that's the next point which is also very important you need somebody in Germany who will supervise your project. And uh, in the next slide, I'm going to talk a bit more about that because that is a rather challenging part of the application process. But your program, your project needs to be agreed to by a host. And then you need two letters of recommendation from people who have worked with you, who know you and who can say something about your leadership potential so that we can hear some other thoughts from other people. And uh, you need a first academic degree, which is in most cases a bachelor. And the, the completion of that degree should not be more than 12 years ago. So we don't have age limits, but we have like an educational degree limit. So after you completed your bachelor, you still have 12 years to apply for the German Chancellor Fellowship. Now a bit more on finding the host. So a host can be anyone who works in Germany for either a public or a private institution. But it is important that they are related discipline or professionally to the project that you want to do. So it, it, it needs to show us that they are able to supervise what you are doing so that uh, your project will get to a success and that you are in an organization where you can really um, yeah, do that project. So that's important. And we, um, we want to stress that it's very important that you start looking for a host as early as possible. I'm sure that we will also still talk with our fellows about this and that they will have good tips and tricks. But I think the most important tip is start early because you might know that in Germany we are about to go into summer holidays here and then it might be harder to reach people. So be early, don't try this at the very last moment uh, because it might need some time before people reply. We also offer a little bit of assistance we still want you to do it yourself, but on our website, you can see as inspiration, you can see a list of hosts that have hosted Chancellor Fellowship programs before. Um, and there's also example emails of how do you address a host the first time? What do you have to tell them in the first email? So there you can also have a look. The link is here and I will still blend in the link also uh, later again. There are also alumni associations where you can also contact people. As I said before, there are 55 people in Brazil who have already done uh, this whole thing once. So get in touch with them, ask them questions, ask whether they have ideas. And the same counts. Maybe you know German companies. We have the Chamber of Commerce here today or organizations that are in Brazil and that might be able to help you through your network that you have in Brazil to help you find and, and continue your network into Germany. So these are important elements. And finally, Dr. Rochman already told a bit about this, but just as a reminder, what do we look for in your application? So we want to know what you have done so far and what your leadership potential is. We also want to know how is this fellowship going to build up your career? So why is this an important step in where you want to get to into the future? And in that, it's also important to see that you really want to build this bridge between Germany and, and Brazil and that that is part of your, um, of your life and career development. As I said before, it of course helps already if you are already internationally networked or if you are and do already have an international outlook, that does not mean that you have had to be outside of Brazil already, but we would like to see that you're interested in what happens outside of Brazil. 
and you need to show us that the project that you want to do is based on knowledge that you already have so that you have what it takes to do this project. And the project should not only be relevant for in your own development and for your own career, but it should also have some social relevance uh, to answer the challenges that both the Brazilian and the German societies uh, face at the moment. So it need, needs to have some bigger, bigger picture. This is my last slide. I'm getting to the end. I just wanted to give you a bit of feeling for what are now the next steps? How does this uh, go about? And as you might have noticed, the, the call for applications has been already open since March. And a very important deadline that you should remember is the 15th of October this year, because that's when the deadline closes. And after that, it will not be possible to submit any more applications. Then only next year you could start again. And uh, please don't start on the 1st of October because it might take a bit to get all your things together, host, but also your project. So start now and keep this, this date in mind. That's when everything should be ready. Then the selection meeting will be in our European spring, so April more or less next year. And shortly after that, you will then be informed uh, whether you have become a fellow. And once you are a fellow, there are actually two strands towards the fellowship. One is what you do on your own and one is what you do with the other fellows. And um, there I have the German language course that depends who else is doing it. And that depends whether you will be doing it already here or whether it will still be online. That all depends on how the pandemic develops. Um, but we offer up to three months of intensive language course. And we recommend that you do that in July to September. And then you have the start of your individual project. And next to that, you have every once in a while meetings with your other fellows, like an opening conference. Then in the half time, you have a retreat. And at the end, the Berlin meeting that I showed you. And your project should be designed for 12 months. We also recommend that you start that project on the 1st of October and that you just go straight through, straight through one year. But if you have um, commitments at your job or if you have family commitments that make it impossible for you to do that, there is some flexibility that you can talk with your host and you can talk with our sponsorship department and you could also break up your fellowship so that if you have to travel back to Brazil, that is possible. So you have a time span of one and a half years and in those one and a half years, the idea is that you do 12 months of fellowship. So of course, the specifics always have to be checked both with your host and with us, but there are some possibilities of flexibility because we don't want family or employment commitments to get in the way of a fellowship. Um, I will finalize with a few impressions so that you get a bit of feeling of how it might feel or look like to be a fellow. So here you have a pre-corona selection meeting in, in normal times. The people, the most uh, promising candidates get together and they are interviewed by our selection committee. And they also have a group discussion. Um, and based on that, they are then finally uh, the, the most promising candidates are, are picked to be fellows. And this is the final meeting where then all the fellows get back together one more time before they go back to their own countries. And as uh, you saw in the video, there are also study trips with your other fellows. This one is, for example, to the German Federal Constitutional Court in Karlsruhe. There are other things that you get to know in, in your fellowship time. And as I said, there are alumni associations uh, for, for the Buka fellows. And every once in a while, we also organize a big alumni meeting. This one here is in Russia, for example, but it can also then be in Brazil, where you get together not only with your fellows from the same year, but also with the previous ones, which I think is also a very nice thing to still meet other people who had other experience, but you're still connected by the fact that you are all German Chancellor Fellowship Fellows. So with that, I'm at the end of my presentation. Thank you very much for being here today and for listening. There are three things that I want to remind you of which you should take away from this presentation. So don't forget the deadline on the 15th of October and start 
early with preparing your application. Then I have put the website here and I think we will also have it later during the Q&A. So if you want to pay a visit to our website, you will find all the information that you need. But if there's information that you don't find or if you have very specific questions or if there are questions that we don't manage to answer here today, you can write to info at hvavh.de and uh, we will make sure that we will solve every question that you have. So I will leave it at this. If you have any further questions, like Stephanie already said, you can write them in the chat and uh, I will be here in a bit also still to answer it. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Tenbrinke. I think that was a lot of content and a lot of the questions that we had on the chat were already answered. And um, also, if you're watching this on our YouTube channel, you can find the link that Dr. Tenbrinke just mentioned down below. So you can just click it. And I think it would be very interesting to hear now from people that went through this experience and after all this useful information, ask them how did they live that? How was that experience? And by, because of that, I would like um, to welcome Mariana Moraes and Ramon Rodriguez. Um, I'm not going to introduce you very fully because I want you to introduce yourself and talk about when you did this program, how did you find out about it and how was your application process so that we can start talking about this and afterwards, we get into the Q&A with Dr. Roschman as well. So welcome. Thank you very much for your time. And Mariana, would you like to start? Yes, thank you so much, Stephanie. It's a pleasure to be here. And uh, I remember when I was preparing myself to do this program and looking for some events and information about the program. So it's really nice, like it's, it's very helpful. So I'd like to share two points with you. So just to start it, I'm from the South Brazil. I'm from Florianópolis. I'm an architect and urban planner. And I would like to share a little bit about my motivation to apply to this program and also a little bit of the, how I experienced the, the application process. So the first time that I saw this program was in 2018. Yes, I was working in the urban development department in Sao Paulo City Hall. And I was looking for some opportunities to develop my capacity of dealing with the challenge that uh, we face to build like inclusive cities, that is my topic. So when I saw this program, I was really excited, but at the same time, I was not sure if I was a prospective leader. So am I a future leader? <laughs> so if you are like wondering uh, that, I also, uh, I would say that there are different perspectives of leadership and it's not just about your position. If you are coordinating a group, for example, so what I identify in my journey is more the commitment with an agenda that's essential for Brazilian cities and how I engage people to deal with these issues. So as the scholarship uh, covers different topics, as Sarah mentioned, uh, this engagement can be in academia, in the private sector, in the public sector, or in the interaction between civil society and government, as in my case, working with participatory planning. So when I observed that, I started to prepare myself to the selection. That is my second point not today. First, uh, firstly, I found a, a host in the institution. And also, uh, as uh, Sarah mentioned, it's very important to start this process like early. So I, I, host, I am hosted today, uh, now today I'm in Berlin and I'm hosted by Rapid Urbanists. It's an organization focused on global urban planning. Uh, I remember that I sent a message by LinkedIn to my host. I presented him my idea of project. And it was amazing because uh, we did some video calls and he already supported me with some recommendations. And at the same time, I, I asked uh, uh, by my, for my coordinator at Sao Paulo City Hall and to a professor of my bachelor, a recommendation letter. And I think that I also would like to emphasize this to ask this uh, letter early and as soon as possible because they need to upload themselves the letter in the system. So that's it. I also come back to English class because the foundation don't ask for IELTS or TOEFL certificates. But at the same time, as I think Stephanie mentioned, uh, we need to be able to communicate in English. And briefly, I think that's it. Currently, as I said, I am in Berlin, designed some recommendations for uh, four programs, two in Berlin and two in Sao Paulo. 
doing my best to learn and speak German as well, <laughs> but it's difficult language, but that's it. And to conclude, I think what, what is the most valuable to me and to now is the opportunity of being connected with a lot of professionals, so many uh, different experiences and perspectives, not just from Germany and also from, uh, and from the program, but also from Asia and the Africa countries, for example. And being able to say that we are a, a, a fellow, a German Chancellor of Fellow, open many doors, and it will be definitely for the, my, my career opportunities. Thank you so much, Marina. I think that was it was very interesting to hear um, this part about the host that you mentioned as well, that you talked to them via LinkedIn, because we had a lot of questions about that. I think Daniel was one of them who said, I send a bunch of emails, but I still haven't had a return. So remember that you have a lot of different ways to contact these hosts as well. And as Dr. Templinke mentioned, um, you also have a list of previous hosts on the website of the, of the Alexander von Humboldt Foundation. So don't give up, but do it in advance so you don't get to the 15th of October without a host. So um, thank you, Marina, for that. I'm looking forward to hearing a little bit more about your experience as well. And Ramon, um, please introduce yourself as well and talk a little bit about your experience with the fellowship, please. Okay, thank you very much, Stephanie. My name is Ramon, Ramon Rodriguez. I'm from the countryside from Sao Paulo, Itu, Sorocaba. And I, before coming to, the, to become a buka, I was working in the pharmaceutical industry. So in the context, I was, it was about five years after my graduation. And then there was a point of my life that I was developing my career. I was happy with what was going on. But also I noticed that I needed to develop more in terms of leadership. Also in terms of my field, I, I was working with product management, I would like to learn more about like accessibility of medicines and so on. And also I was eager to increase, to improve as a person, to have more experience, to go global and to learn a new language, to be exposure to different cultures because German, Germany and Brazil, like they are very different, let's say. And the first step is I, I was in this time and then a friend of mine sent me the link oh, we have this, it looks like for you. And then I say, okay, I will apply for that because Germany in terms of market access, accessibility to medicines is a reference to the world. I say I can learn a lot from that. I was at the moment, I didn't have any host and I didn't have any contacts. So I did, that was in 2015 because I was Buka in 2016. That means at that moment, I don't think we had LinkedIn, but I was Googling and I was sending cold emails. And honestly speaking, I sent many cold emails. So I can tell you that the people that come to, to Germany, they don't have contacts necessarily. They can create those contacts, but you need to convince them. So I sent many, many emails to many institutions. I looked for universities, I looked for, for institutions, I looked for different kind for private companies. I sent them all. And all of some of them, they replied to me and then we could schedule uh, Skype that was at that moment, and then we could discuss and see if it makes sense or not. And among all of those like cold emails that I sent, I found my host. That was, I, I can say, a blast because I didn't know her in 2015, but now we are very close. She was very supportive uh, during the whole process, during the, my whole book, and we are still very close today. And when you come to what I, I, I can I could suggest is it makes you try to understand, try to build a project that really makes sense for your career. Don't try to make something that breaks completely. I, I Maybe it makes sense, but the more it makes sense, the more you can show to the selection process uh, committee that your project will help you to reach the next step. Uh, I think it's going to be easier for you when if you are selected for the selection meeting. Uh, it's very important that also you as a person is very important, your what, how, your potential in terms of your eagerness to be a leader, to go global, to have its connection to Germany, to build good relationships and long la lasting relationships uh, with Germany. This is also very important that you bring that, that your, this wish to your application processes. And my, my host here was the Charité, this, uh, the biggest hospital in Berlin, in Germany. And that was very a very, very good fit. 
And so that means like I was working in a company and then I came to a hospital. So you can see it's like very different things. You can very change, but in the all together, it made sense. And nowadays I'm uh, a few years after my fellowship, I can really see that this was a step that helped me to build where, where I am right now. Thank you, Ramon. I think that was very nice advice. And I would also like to welcome Dr. Rochman back again so that we can start the Q&A. And I would like to talk a little bit about what you mentioned now in the end, Ramon, um, about leadership and about what you and how about you see yourself. And we had two questions, one from Luna and one from Isabel, talking about um, this leadership potential and um, what can you do to prove it? So I think Dr. Tembrinke, if you want to mention that, or Dr. Roschman, if you want to add to that as well, how can how can the, the applicants talk about their leadership potential? How can they prove it? Um, Luna also mentioned, is there a specific document for that? So if you can um, specify that a little bit more, I would appreciate it. Yeah, thank you. Uh, that's, I think it's a very good question. And I was very happy that Mariana also brought this up, that leadership to us does not mean that you have a team of 15 people working uh, underneath you. Definitely not. So for us, we have a very broad understanding of leadership. And it's actually, it's this, it's also we talk about the potential of leadership. So we have to believe that even if you're fresh out of university, uh, we can we can grant your fellowship because we believe that you have it in you to become a potential leader. And there is not one way or one document uh, to prove that uh, because they can also be so different. So I think you can imagine everything. Have you have you organized things when you were at university for other students? Have you run a a university or a school newspaper? Have you started a podcast or have you written a blog? That's also already. Have you engaged to make other people aware of problems or of, of things in your society that you would like people to pay attention to? Or I, so it's very broad and I, I would like not to give too specific ideas here because it can be anything from, hey, I started a startup and I'm running my own business since five years to I am just out of university, but I set up a, a university uh, website or, or blog or, or I have worked for this NGO and I have done this and this. So think about, have you been an inspiration to other people? Have you, have you tried to change things in your society? Have you, have you taken the lead in something? And, and that's already a start, I think. But I could imagine that Dr. Roschmann has other ideas also from his experience in in talking to people uh, and see how they prove or how they talk about it. Uh, uh, thanks, Sarah. I, I couldn't have phrased it better. Uh, leadership is not a formal position you occupy and at least uh, leadership potential. Leadership potential is someone who shows energy positive energy in creating something coming up with some idea and providing evidence that he or she has done something to achieve or to move things from A to B. And this can be the most, so it's always interesting to see it. Of course, I always read with interest any recommendation letters. Now he has four employees or has a team of four or five. It's, it's nice to know, but it's not necessarily the one who really get the final pick simply because leadership is much more than just holding a formal position. Um, and and put yourself into the shoes of your <laughs> of of the of the selection committee meeting and think: Are you someone, or are you truly believing that you are someone who can actually change in whatever area your active uh, things in the future going forward? Um, and, and if you think that's the case, then please provide us with arguments that we can test you against um, um, uh, this 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 potential you have so it's 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 a it's a tricky question and of course we can can be sure that you will get the question how do you define leadership because <laughs> there's not one single definition of leadership and everybody defines a little bit different but it's a very very interesting exercise but um, if if you look around yourself in your family at your school at university you will know 
automatically who are the individuals who are people with energy and managing to influence people uh, to act together as a team. Stephanie, may I just add, add one little thing? Because yes. I think it's very important that Mariana told us that she didn't think of herself as a leader. And uh, that happens with many people, especially with women. So I also would want to just kind of um, motivate you to also talk with people around you and say like, hey, if I would be a leader, how do you see me? Or can you see me as a leader? Why? Because sometimes you also just need the perspective from outside. I mean, uh, for Ramon, it was also somebody who said, hey, you should do this program. Sometimes you don't even see yourself as somebody like that. So also talk to the people around you, people who believe in you. They might help you to, to get there, that you actually have the potential and to also be able to explain why and to defend that for yourself. I think that's very, very good advice and a very a good point as well, uh, Dr. Timbrinke. And um, in talking to other people and getting that other perspective of yourself, and um, that is also a very interesting path for, well, knowledge about yourself, because as you said, maybe you don't look at yourself that way, but other people do. So yes, that's a very, very good advice. Um, I would also like um, now um, to ask Mariana and Ramon, about their projects and about how they structured it. Because we had a question um, from Lucas um, and he was asking about how detailed his project plan should be or how the structure of that should be. Um, I really like to hear from you how that experience was for you. How did you structure it? How did you plan for it? Um, Marina, would you like to start? Yes, thank you, Stephanie. Yeah, this is an important question. I think when we started to look for this program, is like is always I think that okay, how need to be this project? But in the in the website of the foundation, there is already when we are submitting our proposal, there is a already a, a structure that we need to to answer. So I think it's a good advice uh, to start based on this uh, program that is there. That are there. And also, uh, in general, that is, uh, uh, it's like a, a research project, so it's not very detailed, but we need to show uh, some milestones, some uh, goals that you expected to achieve. And yeah, I, I think uh, Hamo also can, can complement. Yeah, thank, uh, thanks, Mariana. For me, it was I, I, how I, I thought at that moment. I say what Germany is this as a reference that's very, very good that I could learn there and what kind of people who I can get to know there. And then with that, I say which problem we have in Brazil that I could go to Germany, have contact interactions and get to know people that could help me to think in a different perspective and I could bring new ideas back to Brazil. So it was basically that a problem that we have in Brazil and then that might have a solution in Germany. and. In the moment, of course, is a project as Mariana mentioned, and then we have we need I include as many people as organizations as I could to have this interaction and to extend my network. That was uh, very important for me, and also uh, I had a way to measure the impact afterwards. How could I? What kind of output I would I expect from this project that I can back bring back home? Yeah, may, so, may I, I add some points, Stephanie? Yes, please. Just, I just remember, uh, remember right now something that I, I uh, talking to some people who are uh, expecting to apply for this program. Always there is like a, a, a thing that, okay, I, I can learn with German. Of course, I'm learning a lot with all the structure of German. But at the same time, we also can teach a little bit about Brazil. And this is a very important point, for example. With my experience in, in the city hall, I'm always exchange things with uh, with uh, German colleagues here. And um, talking about this uh, subject as well about the project, we also had a question um, talking about uh, well, what topic is my project? Does it have to be related to my university degree? Does it have to be if I'm uh, well, I'm an economics major? Do I have to talk about economics during my project? Um, Dr. Tenblinky, do you want to comment on that? Dr. Rashma, you can start yeah. if okay. you're already raising your hand. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I just, yeah. Uh, 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 
I, I, Sarah, I'm interested to hear what you say, but I would, uh, if I look at this, uh, I, I don't think it's absolutely necessary. What I would look at is, okay, if the individual studied economics and now wants to do something in biology, um, to what extent that does this project in biology help the candidate in fostering his career or her career going forward? and in promoting the overall relationship with Germany. I think that's the only thing I would look at. Um, um, uh, even, because, for example, I'm a lawyer, so I can't really judge technically on whether the project makes technically too much sense. What I can judge, however, is the, the, the idea, the spirit, I will then cross-check, is Germany known for that, for example, or is it completely unknown? Uh, or we have Germany has no competence in that or no known competence in that. So I would be more suspicious. But ultimately, uh, it is mostly about the individual we are looking at. We are trying to identify the best possible people. Um, and to the extent the, the scholarship helps those candidates in, in fostering their career and making the next step in their career and to reaching full leadership potential, that's that's what I would personally look for. This I could not have said better. <laughs> so we are on one line there. And I, yeah, I think the most important thing you have to understand is that it needs to make sense on on a bigger level. So you, we, we want to see you have a plan for where you want to go in the next years, and it needs to make sense in 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 that plan and in that uh, stair, so to say. It needs to be one step in your career stair. And if that leads you away from what you studied, but it leads you closer to where you want to be, and it has this bridge building potential, that that's that's perfect. And there's no problem in that, with the caveat that it should not be something you have virtually no idea of. So we need to see like, okay, this person knows what they are doing, they know where they want to go, and there's a good chance that they will get to the goals that they have set themselves with the project. And then it can also be something different from what you studied. Great. And we have a lot of questions um, regarding, well, if you can apply or not. Um, you mentioned this during the, your presentation, um, Dr. Tenbrinke, but I think it would be interesting for us to repeat that as well, because we had a lot of questions about people finishing high school and if they can apply, or people mentioning that they're 35 and if it's okay, if they can still apply. So um, I think the first thing that we have to mention is that we have this 12 year span after you finished your first degree and um, that would be i think the first and foremost and i don't know if you want to add to that and um just yeah. to make it clear for everybody because we had a lot of questions about that in the chat as well yeah 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 maybe maybe about these 12 years if if for example you have had times out because you have raised children uh, then you can contact us if if because sometimes we discount some time if if there are these these breaks in a career so then if you have questions about that you see the email uh, in the lower part of our page just contact us and we will we will calculate with you uh, another thing that i saw is whether you can start before finishing your degree I saw one question that's not possible, but if you know that by the time you start, you, you have your degree, then that's something else. Then you can say, okay, I'm sure that I will finish then and then, and two months later I would start, then we can talk about it. And then it would be conditional on you finishing your first degree. Uh, I also saw one question, can it be part of my master's? That is a bit more complicated because uh, we don't finance your studies. We really finance, this is really already a step in your working career. Um, so that would also be a thing that we would have to look at individually. But I think it would be rather difficult. Uh, what definitely would be important is that you that the project would also make sense without the master degree. So it needs to be something on its own. And whether it then works together with the master, these are these very specific questions that we would be happy if you just reach out to us so that we can clear that directly with you. Um, yeah, and about the 35, like I said, there's no, it, it's related to when you finished your bachelor um and not related to your age were there more of these questions stephanie i think you tackled them all i think okay. you tackled them all 
Um, I would like to make a question to Mariana. Oh, yes, Dr. Roshman, please. Yeah, maybe maybe just to reiterate a bit, uh, uh, the, the spin of the program is to identify potential leaders and bridge builders. Uh, if if people are interested in winning uh, scholarships to taking degrees, technical le uh, degrees of whatever area, there are other programs of the German government where people can apply for uh, DAAD. Uh, at the Humboldt Foundation itself, uh, Alexander uh, Max Planck Institute, and others. So it's it, this is the this is this is the top of the hop uh, in terms even in terms of monetary reward for the scholarship. I think uh, Sarah, this is certainly one of the most of the highest paying scholarships Germany offers abroad. So this is something for for people who 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 want to use that program to build their professional career um, and not in a let's say only technical sense but also in in a more uh, um, international bridge building emotional intelligence side of things to to uh, develop and enhance uh, the career when you are back home in brazil Thank you, Dr. Roschmann. We hit one hour for our live, but I would ask you guys if you have um, 10 minutes so that we can just um, wrap it up and still have um, a few last questions. Um, Mariana, I wanted to ask you, what was um, the biggest uh, differential for you to participating in being a Boca alumni? What was that for you? And what is, has it um, brought to your life? Actually, I'm still doing it. I'm in the middle of my research right now. But I would say, as I mentioned, the connection that I, I am doing, because, yeah, I can learn a lot with people from a lot of different places. And I think um, we can, all the information that we are receiving now, all the contacts, all the knowledge, all the, these things, of, I'm sure that will put me in another step of my career because uh, there are a lot of opportunities that I couldn't imagine that I am living now. So yeah, I could say like uh, I have some. Sometimes I'm with a meeting with people from Armenia, from Africa, from India, from a lot of places that I'm in. I'm learning about with these. So yeah, I think the connection and network is, is the biggest point for me. And Ramon, what was it for you? I have many. Professionally speaking, of course, the knowledge that I got during the with in my host institution, I learned a lot about what I wanted. I got to know many people. I, I believe I also broadened up my perspective to have more global perspective of many things. Germany is very global, and uh, this is like a, a good opportunity to be here. And also, and this a personal perspective. I learned German. Many of the people they go to German, they go in the three months. Uh, we used to have three months in 2016. They do, in fact, after this month, they learn German. It was very impressive. I learned German. I I got this also like this cultural perspective. I changed it a little bit. I mixed my assimilated a little bit of the German culture, and I think I grew a lot as a person for sure. And I would like to make a round so that we can wrap it up. And I'm going to ask all of you, what would be the biggest advice that you would give to everybody who wants to apply um, for the fellowship now? Dr. Simrink, do you want to start? That's a big question. <laughs> I think it's try. You might have all kinds of voices in your head that you're not good enough, that this all sounds very intimidating, that this that this is not for you, but there's only one way to find out. And I think it's a possibility that you don't want to miss and believe in yourself and, and you, you have very little to lose. It could be that you get rejected, but then you also learn something from that. And it could also be that you get through and like Mariana, you think like, oh, I didn't think this would have been for me. So just go for it, try. And we look forward to hearing from you. And we also had had um, some alumni who, who were with us who said they didn't get approved the first year they applied, but they got approved after. So you can also try again. Um, that's also no problem at all. Ramon, do you want to go now? Yes, I would suggest uh, make sense, make this whole the see the fellowship as a step in your career. 
And I think in all the terms, when it was to the topic, the institution, the connections, I think that helped that helped me a lot uh, to to structure myself. And it, and as Sarah mentioned, it's very difficult to to know if you're going to be selected or not. The the foundation, in fact, like uh, supports people, not necessarily only the project. So guarantee that yourself you understand what you want, and the project will come along. Mariana, do you want to give your advice as well? Yeah, I'm in the same way, but yeah, uh, just in your invitation and do it, do it. I think yeah, we need to try and at the same time, sometimes we say, oh, okay, German, English, perspective. It's like sometimes we're not, yeah, we try to think about it, but I think it's a good opportunity to reflect about your own career and to, to align your, your path in this moment, yeah, I think just do it. Yeah. And Dr. Rochman, for you to finish yeah. up, also giving maybe an advice how you can <laughs> sweep up everybody in the selection committee. <laughs> well, it's, it's, uh, uh, well uh, I think we had the question a couple of times. I saw this also in the chat. Do I have leadership potential or not? And how do I evidence that? I think um, a no, you already have, because if you don't apply, you don't, don't even try it. So, Whatever you do, it will be, uh, it's a positive thing because you at least tried. And I think that's the right approach to, to do this. Don't be intimidated at all. Um, uh, what I find great about the program and, uh, and, the, and the alumni association, you will not only make friends with the Brazilian peers and the Buca uh, Fellowship, Uh, colleagues, but also from around the world. So it will be a huge network and you will start seeing your own country in a much broader sense from the outside. And by the same token, you will see yourself outside your normal environment. And this will help you also to identify eventually weak spots or strong spots to develop further in your professional career. I think that's, uh, that's I think, the charm about the fellowship program as such. It's not only Germany, it's the world and it helps Brazil and indirectly, Germany wants to foster that 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 Brazil is 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 a strong link to Germany and the rest of the world through the program. Great, thank you. Um, I think we are going to close now. We still have some questions um, that you can surely find the answer on the link that is, if you're watching on the YouTube channel, you can click the link from the Alexander von Humboldt Foundation down below. Or, as Dr. Tim Rinke mentioned a couple of times, you can also email them at this email address, info at avh.de. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm mixing up all the languages now. Um, thank you all so much uh, for participating in our live event on behalf of the Chamber. We're very happy to promote uh, this event again. Mariana Hamon, thank you for being here. Dr. Rochman. Julius, thank you so much for being here on behalf of the consulate. And of course, um, Dr. Temblenke for explaining um, a little bit more about the program and bringing all this useful, very useful information to everybody. So I hope um, this was helpful. This slide is going to be um, recorded here. So if you want to take a look at the answers or at the discussions later, you can. If you want to forward the link to your friends, you can also do that. And thank you very much. And I wish everybody a happy week still. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank Academic degree, initial leadership experience. Now you want to drive forward your career in Germany? The Alexander von Humboldt Foundation is searching for the leaders of tomorrow from Brazil, the USA, Russia, China, India and South Africa. The German Chancellor Fellowship offers you an opportunity to take the next career step in Germany, irrespective of your field of work. In order to apply, develop your own project idea and find the host of your choice to mentor you. Once your host has confirmed, you can apply for a fellowship. Beatrice, for example, is a journalist who is looking to raise awareness for the global topic of migration in her home country of Brazil. 
she found her German host in an NGO and plans to write a blog on her project as well as to produce stories for the Brazilian media. Or Zai, he's an economic expert who worked on a project to promote German-Chinese business relations in environmental technology. Today, he's a project manager with a strategy consultancy firm, controlling activities in the renewable energy sector in emerging markets like China. Fellows get by perfectly well in English, but thanks to a free intensive German course and daily practice, their German improves constantly. Financially, they don't need to worry, because the fellowship pays quite enough to live well in Germany. And that's not all. Fellows attend conferences together and go on a study tour, meet the federal chancellor, the patron of the program, and make valuable contacts both in Germany and amongst the other international fellows. Would you also like to come to Germany on a German Chancellor Fellowship? Then just find out more.